A year in the making, that is the moment we find ourselves in now. If we were to write the ending to this story ahead of time, it would have included one team that seems to always rise to the top. But a huge upset has changed that storybook finale for Optic Gaming. And now only two teams remain. One has been doing what they do, win, bullying their way through the top half of the bracket. Denial is deserving of their place here near the top. But it's the other team, Revenge, that has people wondering. Previously unproven, they have surprised many and continue their winning ways. Are there winds of the, are the winds of the change in the air, or will experience rule the day? The best. It's why we are here. To be the best means there is no equal. To stand alone at the top. It is a road less traveled. The road is rough, fraught with obstacles in the path to victory. Adversity is the norm here. Looking at the numbers, there are common factors shared by all that determine the high level of success. Intelligence, rational decision-making, risk. Keeping your eye on the prize is just one small piece of the puzzle. Practice makes perfect, but you don't need to be perfect here. Just better, better than before, better than all the rest. Better right now. The next step in creating a legacy is to first win here, on the biggest stage, against the best there is, in front of all. The ultimate prize awaits, the payoff at the end of the road, less travel. The Call of Duty Championship, the name says it all. The end of the road is here. I feel like I'm about to MC the hottest rap battle in the year in the camera guys in front of my teleprompter, so I don't even know what you want me to say. There we go. Look at this. I feel like we're about to face off. This is pretty intense. Indeed, the end of the road is here, gentlemen. Who we thought was going to be here doesn't even matter anymore. It's all about who is here now. Two teams will try, but there can only be one champion. There can only be one best. So it all comes down, who do you think it will be? Let's meet the players. Look at you guys, guys. So we got Denial. Denial, how are you boys feeling today? How's everything going, Clay? Talk to me. You know, we're just ready to play. We're not we're not thinking about anything else. We're ready for this Detroit Hardpoint. You feeling good? All right. Revenge. Tell me, how are you guys feeling? We want revenge. Woo! We put a little play on words. Hey, are you guys, are you, hold on, I got to do this. Are you guys going to deny them? No, I just think they're in denial. Oh. All right. Well, I think we can let you guys go take your positions in the booth. We got a great finals matchup. I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a smudge this for good luck for both of you guys on both sides. Yeah, give them, come on guys. They've come a long way, both of these teams. Give it up for them. All right, I'm sending up to the casters. Kick it off, Puckett and Benson. All right, thank you, Fwiz. It is time, Benson. One year later, a brand new game, and we will have a new champion. None of the players in the booth with a ring yet. That's unbelievable. If you just said that going into this tournament, I think everyone would have said you were crazy. But we're gonna have a brand new team of Call of Duty World Champions. We're gonna see four new players walking out of this venue this evening with a ring. This matchup that we saw just a few hours ago in the upper bracket finals was one of the best matches of the entire weekend. Incredible talent on both sides. It's been teamwork though that has really separated the winning team. And last time it was denial with perfect play to close out the S&D to get here in the championship match. You know, it's weird you say teamwork. That's exactly what Team Revenge is all about. Their teamwork has been impeccable. We saw it at the US qualifier and they shocked so many people with fantastic performances there. They've come to the world championship and haven't disappointed. Then you look over at the other side of the booth, you've got Team Denial, a team full of slaying potential. Clayster has gone negative two maps the whole event and they were both search and destroy. You look at Attach, the young gun, his first world championship, and he's playing like he's a veteran of the scene. It's unbelievable. And everyone putting up MVP caliber performances. When you look at the revenge side, I think they look at one, one name one right now, and that is Aqua. Without he's the doubt. one trying to keep pace with Clazer to top the leaderboard when it comes to the hard points, to stay up at the top of his game when it comes to the search and destroys. And boy, did he put on a show. He had that jumping slam it, against Phase uh, Red just a few moments ago in the lower bracket final. Now, TR is here. They get their second shot at denial. And really, Ben, I can see this one going. Ten don't, games. don't say it. Don't say it. Ten. Don't say it because 2013 was probably the best grand final Call of Duty Esports has ever seen. Last year, 
you know, it went to the favorite going in, and it was a very, very convincing 3-0. This year, honestly, with all the upsets we've seen at this Call of Duty World Championship, it, it just seems inevitable that it's going to be a close final. I, I just hope, I really hope it is. The competition has never been tighter. Has more and more players coming out of the woodwork. We have eight phenomenal talent inside that booth. But for now, let's send it down to the floor with Justine. We are down here on the floor before this amazing matchup. We have an entirely full stand, so let's hear it for Call of Duty 2015. All right. This is what the weekend is all about. We have had so many intense matchups, and it is all coming down right now. One of these teams will be leaving here with $400,000, and it's going to be so super exciting. So make sure you guys stay tuned, and we're going to be heading over to Graham and Mr. X. Thank you, Justine. I'm down here on the floor with Mr. X. Look at this crowd in here. Are you excited? Yeah! Grand final day. Everyone's excited in here. Matt, Mr. X, tell me what you're looking most forward to in this matchup. Uh, you know, TR, they battle their way all the way back here to the grand finals, but I think the story is more about denial. You know, J-Cap denied that ring in the Black Ops 2 COD Champs. And then Clay, you know, last year, kind of felt like he deserved to be on that complexity team that ended up winning it. So, you know, after the year he's had, the ups and downs finds his way in the grand finals. I think it's a great story. So we've already seen this matchup today. What can we uh, learn from the, the matchup we've already seen? Uh, you know, I think in the search and destroy, Denal, they're going to need to play a little bit more passive, kind of gave that one away to TR at the beginning. But TR in the respawn game modes against Phase Red, they looked extremely strong. They started to come alive a little bit, especially Aqua. So this first map, I think, is huge. You know, Denal can come out and win this. I think they make adjustments in s and I think they take that first best of five. But this first map, huge for TR. If they can get that momentum, keep riding that wave into this match, they could be dangerous, of course, the second game. One of the things we've seen again and again this weekend is that partnership between Aqua and Remy. How big is that today? Oh, it's been huge. I mean, Aqua, I know, I think if TR were to go on and win this, probably the MVP of that squad, I mean, just dominating the kill feed with the SMG and then obviously playing great around the hill. Him and, uh, you know, Remy do a great job to working together, putting pressure on the hill. It's going to be looking for them to go big in that first hard point. All right, who is the one player you think everyone should look out for? Who do you think is going to make a big difference today? Uh, Clay, sir. No, I think for Denal, kind of called it before doing some predictions. I thought this would be his event. He's come in and own the entire weekend. Uh, going to need to put up a great performance, though, again, in the grand finals for them to take it home. And a prediction? Who's going to take it home? I, I think Denal takes it. I think it might. I think it goes to a game five in the first series. I think Denal probably wins it in 3-2 fashion. All right, Mr. X, thank you very much, mate. I'm going to hand back up to the caster desk. All right, thank you guys. Just to remind everybody at home who may be tuning in for the first time this weekend, this was a double elimination tournament. We started with 32 teams at the beginning of this whole event. Yesterday, we were down to our top 16. Today, the final three. But Ben, explain what that double elimination tournament means. It essentially means if you can get out of that group stage, which is obviously the first kind of way we whittle down the amount of teams we have, you have a second life, so to speak, but it's not easy. And that has a massive effect on the grand final, of course. The team coming out of the winner's bracket, as you kind of just heard uh, Mr. X briefly touch on, will only need to win one best of five, whereas the team coming out of the loser Revenge. is going to need to win two best of five. So TR essentially needs to beat Denial twice. We'll see if they can pull it off. They definitely have the talent. It's all a few moments away, but for now, let's send it down to our friends on the Xbox stage. What's up, man? I feel like I've teleported all over this damn venue, man. I'm, from, uh, I'm everywhere. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm ready for It's been a good finals. weekend, man. I've enjoyed being here. Totally, do you, man. Do you wish you were up there playing right now a little bit? Don't lie. Come on. I know I hit Don't just a dagger to the me. heart. Don't pull that one on I me. know. You could be finishing second right about now. Exactly. Yep. All right. Uh, that's it. I'm, that was my last roast for the day. Tell me what you think about this matchup coming up. It's going to be tough for TR, I feel like. I mean, even though TR just came off a, a really big win against yeah. Phase Red, the Niles look so strong, and they showed it earlier. In respawn game modes, especially hardpoint, they showed that kind of like slight edge that just something that TR doesn't have. The Nile just seems to have that clutch mode, everything going for them. We've seen TR, most maps actually TR won were basically just resurgence from like two or three minutes to just turn it on yes. like a switch yes. and then yes. it like they go off. Yes. But for most games, the Nile is going to control that and actually have, like, like I said, have control for most of the game. TR is going to have a hard time winning against that and especially for two best of five. I I, like that's what I was going to say. Like if it was because of how close I was commentating the series earlier and it went to a game five, every map was close. I was like, all right, you know, if, if it was that situation, it's one thing. But to be able to have to win two best of fives coming out of losers, like that is a tall order to ask any team against Denial. And I, 
I, too, am skeptical if they have the chops to be able to kind of hang in there through two series. Right. We need all four players from TR to wake up and just all show up right now. I mean, we've seen Aqua do really well. Really well excuse me. We saw Remy do really well as well. But then the, the other two are just kind of like they're, they're hanging in there. They do well. They do don't well. Some maps, they have their mass. But it's we need all four players to just show up really strong and have a full, like, 10 minutes of gameplay for every map and show full control to actually be denial. All right. Ray and I will be on the analyst desk. I'm going to send it over to IJ, who's on the floor with Michael. All right, Michael, so this entire weekend, the entire year leading up to this, I mean, this is what it's all about. So how are you feeling going into this next round? Oh, I'm feeling great. I mean, on behalf of Sledgehammer Games, we couldn't be more excited. This finals is going to be fantastic. Denial with uh, Clayster and Jcap playing at their peak performance. Revenge, a bit of a Cinderella story there, dominating an S&D and uplink. I think the fans are out in for a real treat. I mean, did you expect this? Because this is such a crazy turn of events, how everything happened. And I think for everyone out here, it's been really fun to watch. No, it certainly has. All weekend long, it's been a series of amazing play, upsets, leading up to a really dramatic fight here. I can't wait to see how it turns out. All right, were you ready for this? I'm ready. Are you ready? Oh, for sure. Fuck it. Are you ready? <laughs> so ready. I am so ready right now. Ben is so ready. The I'm players up, are so ready. But we have one more thing to do, Ben, before we can kick this match off. And that is to introduce the world to the eight best players in the room this weekend. Let's start it off. Who do you think is going to be the stronger team in this? Stronger team in the whole grand final? Sorry, I'm going with Denial. Apologies to the TR fans out there, but I think Denial had the experience in, in the form of Clayster to be able to come out. He's the hype man. You know, lots of eyes on attach right now as you know, his first world championship. Can he stay composed? I believe with the leadership from JCap, the experience from Clay, and you know, the general support the replays will bring to the team, he'll be able to hold his own. Well, let's start it off with our player introductions. You are going to take a look at Denial Jcap. He finished second in 2013 with Envy. He's been all over, and now he has a home on Denial, looking so strong next to the objective master in replays. Yeah, this guy, one of the most selfless players you'll ever see. He'll do anything for the W, and that's so crucial. And then, of course, Attach, his first Call of Duty World Championship this year. He's been sitting there watching the past two, and oh my, has he come out with a bang. clayster has been to every Call of Duty Championship right there with replays and J-Cap. Last year, we saw him finish third. Will he get the ring this year? He has one more team to power through. It's the only accomplishment this man hasn't got. He's got X Games gold. He's got MLG Championships. He's got UMG Champion. He has everything apart from that World Championship ring. It will mean so much if he can lock it up here, but he's gonna have to get through. Nagafen has been locking it down, leading the team coming into today with the best kill to death ratio on this team revenge lineup. He's going off at any moment, but he's really working well with this man. I call him Mr. Clutch. Aqua has had some of the fastest some of the flashiest highlights of the week. Oh, without a doubt. He's been making plays, which we, we sit there and think, you know, no one's going to do that. No one's even going to try it. And then Remy. Oh, I mean, this guy just missed a consistent so far throughout this tournament, it seems. And, you know, we talk about Facento as the, the mature figure inside that booth. He is such an important role. You know, these guys have never been in a position like this. He needs to keep them calm. I love what Facenta's brought to this team since he joined. They have a leader. They have a voice in game. Everyone knows exactly what to do. They featured some of the most stellar teamwork, but in this matchup, they're going to have to hang with Denial when it comes to the slaying. Last time they played in hardpoint, Clayster took over the game with the bow. As we head to Detroit, I need to see someone step up and shut Clay down early on. And that's the that's the honestly the perfect point going into this Detroit hardpoint. I think what you may see is Nagafen pull out the Ameli. I think they know toe to toe when it comes to assault rifle versus assault rifle. Clay, one of the best in the game. I don't think they're gonna be able to compete with that. But the beautiful thing about Team Revenge, they don't mind thinking outside the box. They'll do things which no one else has ever seen. And in the grand final, knowing you need to win two best of fives, you're gonna pull out absolutely everything. And for those who don't know how Hardpoint is going to work, this is the first game in our best of five. You need to control the specific locations on the map. Every 60 seconds, that location is going to move. Crowd getting hyped, too. And it's going to be the first team to 250 points or the team with the most points at the end of the 10-minute oh, time limit. And oh, Remy's going to open things up with a stop to Clayster. <laughs> Let me throw on your COD vision. Of course, the players don't see these outlines, but it's a fantastic tool now in Call of Duty Esports for the broadcast Bucket, team. I think we're going to have a great grand final when the first kill in the whole game is a stone. It, it, it's going to be a good one. TL with a bit of an early lead, 9-2. to two, Have control over the hill. 
Uh, just have a flick through. See if anyone has brought out anything remotely interesting. We see anything different, or is it just kind of business? Man, this is Bows and ASM ones. Of course, okay. the ASM one, the preferred SMG of the pros. The Bow, the preferred assault rifle. Remy is going to be running around with that SMG, and we talked about this man. He just plays at a lightning fast speed in Aqua, constantly charging oh, the wow. hills. But look at Aqua, a three kill spree for him and his teammate Facento pulling out the bow to battle. Clacer is opening up a perfect four kills, zero deaths. Uh, look at Clay, 0 oh, and 5. Facento, 4 and 0. Oh. Did finally just fall. But, you know, if you're into an alpha, you need Clacer to be going off. That's been the key, the recipe to success. This whole world championship has been Clay. And that's a lot of pressure. It really is. But I think Clay more than capable at being able to handle it. You know, and it's really not just Clay. You're also going to look at Attach and JCap. They've been right up oh, there yes. with Clayser throughout this entire tournament. Incredible kill to death ratios. And really, at the start of this one, it was only Attach who was getting the kills. He's sitting at five and five. The rest of the team negative. Free plays, you're going to kind of expect him to be about negative two to negative 10 at the end of games. But he's constantly going to be on that objective so far. He's stepping up and really getting in the hard points as Attach is trying to heat up. It's Aqua who shuts him down. And just a to touch on replays again. He's not the player that's going to finish with the most kills on the team. But that's fine because the kills he does get are the crucial ones on the hard point. And they're realistically, at the end of the day, the ones which really do matter the most. We're going to see the rotation. Clay pulling out the bow is going to lock down the spawns. Aqua trying to sneak in. He knows where Denial sets up. Unable to stop it, though. The hard point is inside the garage. Vicento trying to make his way. Gets attached. Won't be able to pick up a second. And Nagafen right behind him is going to get the kill. Will he jump through the window and challenge? The pressure from Denial has been so strong. And you'll see JCap is just picking up the time. It's going to be Denial tying things up on our scoreboard at about two and a half minutes into this one. Oh, and JCap has to go big hit, just play for his life. He knows this play is to his right hand side. It's going to be Nagafen. Looks like he's going to go for the challenge, and Nagafen picks up an easy double kill. Replays going to try and help on that hot point, but attached in the stairwell is going to drop, and TR picking back up that slaying. And that's what really impressed me at the start of this game, Puckett. TR just came out all guns blazing. Absolutely, and you saw it came from three different players Remy, Nagafen, Aqua, all in the kill feed. Nagafen, really, I feel like this is a guy who doesn't get enough attention. We'll be showing him throughout this tournament. and. He does it all. He does it with he the does. SMG. He does. he does it with the bow. And I really love it when he pulls out that Ameli. It's something that a lot of people are starting to put two and two together. When you right. see Nagafen, you expect <laughs> the Ameli. I mean, he's one of the more capable players of running the Ameli and making it sort of viable in respawn. You see a, a couple of players may dabble with it in search and destroy. But when it comes to hard point, you really can uh, expect to see Nagafen do some unusual things. I love that. Two denials credit. They are coming back into this after a very, very slow start. You can see Clayser, he's locking down this middle lane. You have a teammate watching the right flank and two players inside the hard point in case Attach goes down. Attach on a five streak, Clay on a four streak. Both players oh, holding Clay. the front end so well. Attach going to fall, so will Clay. And that is going to mean JCap and Replays need to get over there. Replays going to take one oh, player out and Attach is right there to back him up. Replay single handedly just broke that hard point. There was two plays from TR inside and Replays just wrapped through the mole. Ultimately ended up picking up three kills. However, he does fall, and it's going to be Remy and Nagafen picking up that scrap time. It looks like Remy has rotated over to the last hard point now in the first rotation of Hills. And we'll show you where the players from TVR are set up. Team Revenge holding it down first. But now, Nagafen needs to break back after you saw J Capic crew flood through. Gets one, and he's looking for another just to sit here. Facetto and Remy doing the damage. Someone's brought out Amelia. I can hear the bullets firing in the background there. Curious to know exactly who that was. May have just been for the start of that hill, but one thing's for sure, they're now starting to build themselves a little bit of a lead. Jacob on the hard point at 9 and 12. Gonna charge, picks up the kill. Shot in the back, though. And down goes three from that denial squad. It's Aqua on the four streak, kind of quiet. And this was the problem last time they faced off. I think it's Clay. Him Clay's brought out the Amelie. Is it Clay? You want to see Clay? I think he's brought out the Amelie. I'll stay on board with him as soon as he comes back from respawn. Here nope. he is. He's bowing. He was using something a little bit different. Ben, you're here. So. No, no, 100%. He hardwired, though. That is something definitely to know here, Ben. Why is he rocking the hardwired perk? You know, hardwire is going to stop stuns having as big of an effect. Obviously, stuns on this game very, very powerful. And it's, it's very important for a player like Clay. You know, he's going to be trying to anchor those spawns down. You can expect players from TR to be trying to stun him. So using hardwire is going to help him out. Welcome to all the casual viewers joining us here in eSports, but now we're going to turn on the hardcore casting mode, taking it to Glacier Ben. 
Walk me through. Oh, <laughs> oh he we, gets his three feet. We see 30 seconds left on this center hard point. Where's Clay going next? You know, Clay right now just wants to slide. You don't want your bow play to be anywhere near that hard point at this point. And finally, a little bit of support does come in. He has Jacob in there. And the more kills Clay's that can pick up around the outside of this hill, the less pressure Jacob's going to have in it. But now, ultimately, with 16 seconds left, he was forced to try and push in. Had the ASM one in his back pocket as well, which he picked up with a dead body, so he could afford to make that move. Denial's getting out Slade right now. Attached, he's sitting at plus two, just plus one for Clayster. Clayster, though, starting to heat up. We talked about they need to stop him early on. They did, but Attach oh, was attach. really making up for that lack of kills. And now you see Attach showing off why he is considered one of the best young gamers in Call of Duty Esports. Finally take it down, but he is definitely leading the team in slaying right now, leading all players tied with Remy at 25. And that was a perfect example of how important movement is in Call of Duty Esports. You see, you know, Attach just kind of dashed through. Previously, it's just, oh, you know, plays with amazing gun skill. Now you've seen players who just, just managed to perfect the movement in the game. And replays and denial will hold on to the last few seconds here. It looks like actually 30 seconds off. Big kills going down outside. It's Clayster and Attach, the duo taking over the middle lane. And you're gonna see Clayster oh, charge in. Play. Naga Finn's gonna get thumped there with the left arm, and here comes Clay behind two more players. I love the rotation here. Denial putting pressure on their opponents from all different directions. Oh, nice play from Clay. Doesn't want to give up any scrap time, and that's big, because that now will push Denial just over that. 190 point mark, so they're gonna have a big, big lead going over towards the garage hop point. If replays can stay alive, they play for his life a little bit. Potentially pick up one, maybe two gunfights. This is massive play for no, oh. replays. Can he get the three? No, he can't. Aqua shuts him down, but attached with a perfect position to trade. Clayson jumps through the window, and they're now in full control of Detroit Hop. And I think that was a perfect display of what replays brings to this game. He doesn't get the most kills on the team, but as you said earlier, he gets the intro kills to Hills. He gets the important ones that allow his teammates to flood in behind him. Clayster continuing to play so sneaky. Clay, smart. He oh. wants this ring so bad. He's then. on the 10-kill streak, Chris, and he is in the grand final. Over. At 11, he's about to hit 40 kills. Still two minutes to go. Oh, if he'd have killed him, I would have just dropped the mic and walked out. Denial averaging a 90 Five point advantage in all hard points throughout this tournament against their opponents here. They are winning by over 115 and counting. Denial is 20 points away from putting this one away. And more importantly, look at the rotation towards that next hard point. Denial rotated a little early as well as picking up that scrap time and they could actually end it here on this next hard point. It's contested. I believe Remy has won that gunfight. Oh, 31 and 31 piece. performance from him. You know, he's shot for TR, but you know, realistically, in hindsight, when you when TR look at this, they're not expected to win the hard point against no. a team like Denial. So this isn't too shocking. You would expect a team to slay heavy. You know, when you have Placer on a team who is just going to ultimately disrespect players just like that and manage to stay alive, I mean, it's so hard to outslay a team like this. Clay is looking incredible. Replays with the three-piece in your kill feed. Attach, charging out, putting pressure on oh. the spawns. A three-piece for Attach, now looking for four, and that is going to do it. 250 to 123. Phenomenal job by the Slayers to keep the pressure off of the objective. Denial just made a statement here in the first game of the Grand Finals. Definitely. Now what's going to be really interesting is how a TR going to react, oh, sorry, bounce back in that search and destroy. Both these two teams have had a great event when it comes to search. Personally, I think TR the stronger of the two. Nagafen, he's smiling though. They're just going to wipe that one off. Come back at Denial in Search and Destroy. We'll find out if they can tie up this series going into game number two. But for now, let's send it down to our friends on the uh, Xbox desk. Guys, take it away. So that was a, a slaughter. I mean, let's call it like, you know, what it is, right? It wasn't that big of a oh, slaughter, okay. though. It, it, I right. mean, yes, it's 250 to 130. Yeah. You're like, Rambo. How does that not a slaughter? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, so here's an interesting set. At the, at the half of the game, Denial was being outslayed. Yep. At the end of the game, Denial was outslayed by 20, 25. So they just started picking it up. And the, and the big point here is the fact that Denial was able to get a 35-point lead despite being outslayed. Yeah. And that's something that we haven't seen anyone do besides Tierra all week. So I think that's super interesting, the fact that Denial was able to keep a lead with the, despite being outslayed. And you know, like, Clayster and Tatch and all them are going to start slaying at some point, right? It's just it's yeah, it's a matter of time, right? Right. And, and we saw the Clayster movement was so good. Like, yes, he did go on an 11, 11 kill streak, and the, his gun skill is obviously amazing. But the fact he was getting away from those bad situations, we saw him kind of juke out a few players, boost left and right. It was absolutely amazing. I think that's super crazy to see, especially in advanced warfare, about how, how the skill gap is created from that movement. And the game's still pretty close here. I mean, look, we're only talking about a 40-point difference at the 3-minute, 55-second mark.
but things started to really pick up here quick for right. Denial. I mean, they just crushed that hard point and really opened up the gap. Yeah, the second hard point on the second rotation yes. is where they got that crazy lead, like you're watching exactly right here. They got a good 45 points out of that. They already had that 30-point lead after that hard point, and they were able to break that garage setup really quick. They didn't win the rotation on garage, but, I mean, they're just killing everything. And you see her Clacer here. That's what That's I was talking sick, about, about yeah. the movement. Oh, dude, it's so slick, and he just he's not missing anything. So super scary for, for TR to actually go out into that S&D now. I mean, with how Denial slayed that game, if TR doesn't win the Search and Destroy, yes. you got to be antsy, man. Yes, uh, and I think they've got a good chance at it. I mean, they played, when they played earlier, they had a really mean Search and Destroy game. But Clayster, I, I struggle to believe that Clay got this far and isn't going to close it up, man. And he's playing just like that. Yeah, you're totally right. And it's also the fact that in S&D early, they both got to feel each other out. So something something interesting for the fans out there is when you play Search and Destroy against the same team a lot, you yeah. kind of start understanding how they're playing, the rotations. And I think I would have to give the edge to TR, though, because TR was kind of playing the counter strats, and they were... A lot of the things they're doing were kind of outplaying Denial strategically. So if Denial doesn't really pick up on that and keeps playing that aggressive style early on and slow down later, I feel like maybe TR already knows that's going to happen. So if TR is able to pick up a few rounds early on and, and not have to kind of deal with those end rounds like we saw Denial do yep. earlier, maybe they'll be able to take that SD really easy. All right, well, let's find out what's going to happen with game number two. Puckett and Benson, take it away for us. All right, thank you guys. Great analysis as always coming out of Rambo. Of course. Voice is just like, what just happened? There? All you have to do when you stand next to Ray is ask questions and he will give you the best answers you could ever imagine. Uh, but going into the key play matchup for game number two, Search and Destroy, JCAP, a 1.37 SMD KD. Remy for TR at 1.17. Average kills pretty even between the two, a 6.9 from JCAP and a 6.47. First blood percentage, though, this is where it's interesting. Right. JCAP, 36%. That's huge for Denial. Remy at 25%. Now, last time these guys played a search and destroy, it was Denial taking it in game five. But before that, these guys matched up on Biolab S&D. Mm -hmm. And I was amazed by Aqua and Remy's play. They really set Fando, up all the of these kills together. And they were getting first blood after first blood, setting the tone, guys. But we want to know, who do you think is going to take the entire series here? Use the hashtag CODCHAMPSMVP, and of course, use your hashtags XBOXCOD, and the teams you think will win. That's so close, 51% to 49%. I want to point out as well, going back to that game one, just a, a, another brief bit of analysis, Clay started off 0-5, and, and you sat there thinking, oh, you know, what, what's going on with Clay? Finishes 41 and 26. I personally think Clay saw that MVP trophy, he was like, I am walking away with this, this event. He's ready, man. But so is so replays. Hungry. Replays and JCAP right there with them. They've been to three world championships. Will they finally achieve their goal of becoming world champions? They are one game closer, but it's a best of five for them. Yes. Can they take this search and then finish strong with the game three? Right now, they have all the momentum. I mean, as you kind of brought up, that now just need to win two more maps. Two more maps, and they become Call of Duty world champions, whereas TR now, they need to win three, and then go to a second best of five, and this is the thing which really excites me, Chris. For the first time in competitive Call of Duty history, we added DLC into the map rotation, and that's exactly where we're going for game number two, Drift, Search, and Destroy. We're keeping the game fresh here in eSports, Ben. Players, you know, towards the end of the previous titles, maybe getting a little bit bored of playing yep. the same maps Definitely. over and over again. If you are the same way at home, don't worry. The new DLC is out. We got another one coming on Tuesday. You saw it a little bit earlier, but I'm so excited to see Drift Search and Destroy. Who has practiced this map more? Who is going to be ready so, so this to is take this game? When it comes down to it, I spoke to TR about exactly this, because obviously the map rotation came out a while ago, and TR said, all right, well, you know, we need to grind, we need to practice Drift, and that's exactly what they did. Now, they played threes up. Another North American team, one of the best Search and Destroy teams currently out there, I personally believe, and they lost, ultimately, I think it went to a round 11. But Facento said he learned a lot from that experience. And, and what are you expecting to see on this map, Ben? I know you've cast it quite yep. a few times in our, in our 2K and 5K tournaments at MLG. What's kind of the key to victory on <laughs> this map specifically? Yeah, it, it's interesting, because obviously there's a big dynamic map element which occurs. Um, the avalanche, essentially, which covers snow on the whole side of the map, and it changes it quite quite massively. So there's that, first of all, you need to be wary of exactly how that dynamic map element is going to work. And then as well as that, it's so difficult to plant the bomb, I feel. Whether that's just, you know, players haven't had enough time with it yet, could potentially be that. But we'll have to wait and see. I think if, if you can be aggressive, 
and you can push past that avalanche when it occurs, especially on the attacking side, you could catch so many teams off guard. Look at that crowd. Shout out to Shout everyone out to crowd, here in man. Los Angeles. I met so many people who flew across the world from Australia, from Europe, South Africa, everyone here to see the World that Championship live. Face. And that is the biggest <laughs> attached face I've ever seen in my life. I remember when we saw uh, Clay's family bring, bring the Clay faces back in the MLG event. Nice to see Attach getting some love. And the, the Attach face is coming out. Nothing but smiles Nothing from but Attach. Smile. Attach is, honestly, he's such a nice guy. He really is. And, you know, you, you kind of want to see him succeed here on the world's biggest stage. Well, of course, right now, the players just making sure they have their classes ready. This is the grand finals. We're going to give them as much time as they need. Oh, absolutely. It looks like TR is done strategizing. Same thing with Denial. Shout out to Robbie there, the owner in the front row, cheering on his team. Can Denial take a 2-0 lead, or will TR tie it up at one apiece? This is going to be an insane game of Search and Destroy, that's for sure. Especially adding on the fact that it's Drift. And there you see the game starting up. The fist bumps come in from the boys over in the Denial booth. And Clay, big old smile. He knows he's two maps away now from achieving the one thing he hasn't done in his career. Will they be able to lock it up? Who's got the better strategy? We've seen so many B pushes that have just been the fastest rounds possible. I yep. think I cast a three minute SND as all <laughs> players just yep. charged at each other I mean, one of those on this as well. map. It's, it can be insanely quick. And at the same time, the opposite is true. It can be insanely slow. Big thing to really look out for on this map is on defense, someone maybe double jumping just to try and get a little bit of intel onto where those attacking players are gonna go. And, and Ben, of course, if you double jump right away, you're gonna get into instant action. Oh, immediately. Who do you expect to see it more from, the attacking squad or the defending squad? I think, you know, the defensive squad, just because they're trying to pick up that intel. And again, you, know, you can see the same thing from the attacking squad. Trying to get that first pick changes everything. Replays, instead of double jumping, is going to throw out double nades. He's got danger close as well. So if one Love of it. those lands, you are dead. Instead, though, Aqua and crew are going to move out of the way. Revenge getting into position first, but look out for attach on the other side. Had an angle on Aqua. Instead, it's all eight players up, and I really like this defensive spread coming in from Denial. And the big problem TR have right now is Attach and Co. are playing so aggressive for Denial, they've essentially pinned TR into a very, very small corner. Now TR just have to rely on winning those gun fights, and Jacob using the carousel to his advantage, tags someone up, he's gonna fall. That was Pacenta that picked that up, Attach in a position to trade those. So now, three uh -oh. versus three, Attach is gonna fall mid map. That's Nagafen, two versus three for Denial. Nagafen trying to get out alive, and he's gonna move this over to B. Action going down, though, over near the A building, and we are going to see Denial stacked up on A. They don't want to leave each other. I like this strategy. Stick together as the bomb is planted. They're going to need to pick off players one at a time and always be in position to trade. Remy, though, I think he just heard Clayster, and he's definitely going to see replays if he peeks out that window. For now, though, replays may have an angle, but he has no idea there's a player directly above him. He's going to try and push in as well. Of course, Denial needs to try and defuse that bomb. Aqua took so long to take that shot and missed. Could get punished, but no, cleans up. Nicely played from him. <laughs> All smiles from the TR boys, but you know, it could be an early sign of maybe a little bit of nerves in the search and destroy. That's missing a, a shot great like spot that. from Aqua, too, and he has not shown that in any of the matches that I've seen. So they're saving some tricks here oh, for the grand finals. I love Without this coming out of revenge. Without a doubt, they, they know they're one of the most well practiced teams in the game right now, and they definitely have some stuff still hidden up their sleeves. And as I said kind of earlier on, <laughs> you're in the grand final. Backs against the wall, they're going to have to bring it out. Pacento is going to go with his sniper rifle, and it looks like right away Bomb Carrier is going to be happy to trade a few. Remy actually going get, to get a pick, and we're going to go see, can he grab a second one? Nothing out of the ordinary here for Remy's class, just sticking with that thermal Morse. He's going to see someone jumping any second now. Last breaks, and Clay using cold-blooded. Remy didn't actually see that, so Remy, a bit of uh, tunnel vision. And that's Clayster now safely behind the wall, and look at that, Facento is going to get a pick before I can even switch to that player. And we will see. Can Clayster and Replace pull this back in a two on four? It's not going to be easy. easy. Replace underneath. Clayster's going to charge out, take out Aqua. So two on three. This is manageable. They still have the bomb. However, they're going to be. There's a player looking directly at Replace. He knows he's here. It's going to be Remy. And Remy's trying to take the safe routes, but he exo boosted it around. And he is going to get caught. Replays hurt it and will punish. One versus two. Replays. Could potentially do this. Still has bomb in hand. 27 seconds left. Problem he has here is Nagafen is currently going to be top glass. Such a big power position. And 
You know, Replays doesn't really have that much time to work with. He's going to get tagged up. going to have to challenge, but falls. And TR go 2 0 up in the search and destroy. Revenge is so good at search, Ben. Yep. They, they really are. They're a fantastic, fantastic SD team. And sometimes you'll see Facento kind of put up poor numbers in respawn, but SD really where this guy excels. I think we should just watch Facento on this next round. He got a three kill round there. Is he sticking with the sniper rifle? He's looked very comfortable with it. Picked up one of the kills, but it was Remy who got that first blood. We talked about him being so key before the match, and he has shown you how he gets it done. Pacento off the break, not going to see anything. Your bomb carrier, Nagafen, is looking to target a B site, and there should be some action. Go down that way. Remy is going to drop a tatch, and that's going to make J-Cap double back. Call it out, guys. They're definitely looking into B. Take cover. And again, look how passive TR are playing this. This is the second time in a row where you haven't really seen them move out spawn. They're playing for picks, and it worked last time. It looks like it's going to work again. When Akbor is sniping like that, you're going to have no issues on the attacking side. Two players left for denial. Once again, they lose that first blood. They lose their second, and they're in a tough situation. Replays is going to have two players crossing. Gets one. Aqua spots him, and Aqua had that oh, sniper. No. There is another snipe coming in. It's all up to J-Cap now. This is going to be a 1v3. Jacob still yet to find a kill. They're in search and destroy drift. That bomb heading over towards the B site. And the player actually just double jumped straight over Jacob. He's going to turn around. Should be able to pick an easy kill. Gets it. Happen. Very, very close to the snipe. Now one versus two for Jacob. And bomb is planted, Ben. So 40 seconds for Jacob to work with. Of course, it's going to take seven and a half to get there and defuse that bomb. And that but player first. from TR has absolutely just booked it back to his spawn as well. So this is this is going to be almost impossible for J-Cap to clutch. You see the split from TR players, and I mean this is so tough to do for J-Cap. He sees one. That's Nagafen. It is a one versus one now. Wow. But he only has 20 seconds. Best choice, just jump on that defuse. Yeah. Uh, we we saw it earlier. Eggs tried to do this though, and he was punished. You see the one on one camp. J-Cap oh, on him. your left, oh. Remy on your right. This is a huge fight, and Remy is going to buy enough time despite J-Cap getting the kill. He will not be able to defuse the bomb. That is another round win going in favor of Revenge. Something we, we talked about, Mr. Rex, talked about earlier on, and when it happened earlier on, uh, player clutches up but can't get the defuse. Might just pick the kills. Still gives him a little bit of motivation. He had zero kills up until that 1v3. Yeah, he didn't defuse the bomb, but now he's going to feel a little bit more comfortable in this game. Oh, he's going to feel so confident. He just destroyed people with this Val. One on three. JCap is capable of anything in search and destroy. He displayed that back at the North American Regional Final. What is he going to do at the start of this one? He's running up the left side. He's got a teammate leading the charge that'll be attached, the youngster. But it's Aqua. First blood again goes in favor of <laughs> TR. So does second. Nagafen causing problems, and he's getting aggressive. TR is so efficient in search and destroy bucket. It's not even funny. The first blood percentage these guys get is ridiculous. It's, I mean, four row in favor of PR. Me and Ray on analysis earlier on today talks about, you know, the differencing between a 3-0 and a 4-0. 4-0 is huge for Team Revenge. Don't see a way of denial coming back into this s &D. Do you know what's awesome? What's that? I just heard a huge roar from the crowd. They are getting behind this Revenge oh, yeah. squad coming in to this tournament. I think there's just a handful of people who are really big TR fans. They have gained so many new followers this week and so many new supporters who are cheering them on, looking for them to tie it up against denial. And, and rightfully so. And here is that, that dynamic back bubble. And this is really interesting. TR are going to try and Flood over towards that A site. Are they going to be able to get there in time? I believe that bomb carrier is actually in the A site. Clay's just going to try and react on the defensive side, and he's going to get bit by a nade by J-Cap. Uh -oh. He's been killed by the Avalanche. So that rush not working out in his favor. The central able to trade the kill, though. Now, two versus three. You see Replay still being a little bit wary. He's going to level that 2v2. But I love that immediate push straight out the back from the guys at TR. And there you're going to see Bomb down. Two attackers alive. It's Faceno. Looking to clean up the final kill, and he tags him up. Will finish. That was replay. Stuck so in a hard place. So confidence. And again, the, <laughs> I mean, what's the best way of putting it? Just the knowledge that you can beat the Avalanche. Right. Even some players, you know, a little bit unsure about whether you can. I mean, ultimately, as we touched on Aqua. He got died. punished a little bit. But <laughs> Aqua died But he that. knows it's possible. Right. And, and the team kill as well didn't help the now with that nade. Jake kept shutting down Clay's. He tried to check that bomb site. Right. He may have picked up one, even two kills there. But everything going TR's way here in Search and Destroy Drift. Big shout out to everyone behind the scenes at Activision and Sledgehammer for making sure it's as even as possible. Oh, yeah. The Avalanche comes down in the fifth and sixth round. So both teams oh, will see it coming again. down when they're on the attack. And right away, Aqua opening up with first blood denial. 
They're kind of still in their base here, and Aqua's getting aggressive on the flank. Uh, and TR just stacked that B site, expected Denial to push it, uh, knowing they're not going to do a hard push over towards A with that avalanche coming down. Now with the numbers advantage, 4-3, this will be one of the best comebacks in Cod Esports history if Denial were able to do this. It's going to be your bomb carrier replace. Leading the charge over to A, Attach is still hunting. They saw players rotating behind him, so definitely checking every corner possible. Haven't seen anything yet, and it looks like finally we will see Aqua with a potential angle. Is he going to get back up top? It looks like he was trying to get a little bit of vision. Sees one player, pulls out the sniper rifle. I love his confidence. He's like, well, you know, sniper, one-shot kill for the majority of the time. Goes for it, turns around, and there's one. Able to trade, which is big. Attached, though, picks up Nagafin. Now this two versus two situation. Replays has the bomb for now. Time ticking, though. Only 20 seconds, and Remy's going to pick up the kill. Now replays in a one versus two. Now 1v1. As replays has to go up against Remy. Yeah, and Remy's, Remy's charging yeah, right in. Replays, That's say goodnight. Oh, demolition. Yeah, so basically denial. this is a little bit better than winning by 127 points. That was impressive. Point. That was impressive, but to not give your opponents a single round in search and destroy, I mean, that's going to give them all types of confidence going into a game three. Insane stuff coming out of TR, showing you why they are considered one of the best teams when it comes to search. A dominant performance on Drift. We're tied up a one apiece, but we're still going to see CTF yep. and Uplink guaranteed. Now, can't wait for those yes. games, but first, let's wrap up game number two. Fwiz, Rambo, what do you think? So, Ray, you know how important First Bloods are in Search and Destroy, right? I think it showed there. It showed, Facento had two, Remy had two, and Aqua had two. So that's 6-0, yeah. First Bloods for everyone. They had and that blood. shows you why important, how important that first pick is. Definitely. And, it, and, it, and how they did it were basically three out of the six rounds were snipes. Crazy. And they just showed incredibly control off the start of the round. They got all the information they needed. They played reactively to what Denial was throwing at them, and they even counter strategized them. Like we saw in round five and six, we saw Aqua get killed by the Avalanche, but they, they made an A rush. They tried to go beat the Avalanche. Uh, because Clacer was challenging that push with a sniper, Aqua got a bit greedy, tried to run through along the wall, and the Avalanche ended up falling in his head, but it still ended up being a three on three situation because they got that first kill with the sniper, and then ended up winning the round. And then right after that, in the last round, we saw basically Denial, uh, the, excuse me, Team Revenge countering that by basically just, we're going to stack B because we just pushed A, yep. and it's mind games. Like, oh, you're not going to push A because we just pushed A. So they just completely counter that rush, blind counter, get the first blood, get advantage, end up being that 1v1, and then that. Revenge is on the board going into game three. Do you have any predictions? What's your, where's your head at now? I mean, I don't know what to think after Denial, what they did game one, and then Revenge just flipped the script on a pretty good S&D team in Denial like that. Yeah, I didn't think they could get 6-0. It's, it's then again, it's Facento and Aqua. They were yeah. both the players. I feel like if, the, if Remy and, and they can just show up and just like pull out a crazy performance where they're the ones carrying kill wise and doing things around the map that they need to be doing, I feel like they have a chance to be denial in this best of five. But I mean, it's doing it twice. That's really like looking ahead a little bit. I feel like doing it twice is really the, the interesting points here. So they really need to get those next two going on real quick. And an interesting stat again, the CTF is always the winner. So whoever wins CTF normally wins the best of five. So. Who's going to win CTF? All right. Uh, yeah, and I think what was the, the stat was like 91% of like the that, teams yeah. that probably win their CTF. Higher. Probably a little higher now, yeah. right? 91%, maybe a little higher, win that win CTF, win the series. So a lot on the line in this Capture the Flag game. We're going to set it back up to the booth with Puckett and Benson. I wish you guys could see what Ben was doing right before the camera <laughs> came back to us. Ben, you just freaked out oh, when you saw yeah. the game type. What are we about to I see? Did. Come back up, Link. If ever there was a fan favorite of a map and a game type, it's that. Then you add the fact that TR have, without a doubt this weekend, looked like the best uplink team in the game. That decision making has been T1. And then they're going up against a denial squad who can definitely hold their own in uplink as well. Absolutely. TR, so good at this game type. There's, there's a few things I want to point out about TR when it comes to uplink. Go ahead. Number one, that ability to intercept the satellite drone has been better than any other team. It's kind of a skill in its own way. You have, to time, you have to time the double jump. You have to know roughly where the play was coming from, and you have to track the drone as it comes in. Facento made a last second interception to keep TR alive earlier on in the day. It was insane. The second thing I want to point out is that decision making as a team. If that base is completely over flooded by the other team, yep. they're more than happy to just give it up, let a two-point play go, and control the satellite drone respawn area. And that is crucial in uplink. And of course, TR really showing the passing 
in this game. Pen. That's another key Not thing. many teams have been using it. You all often see three Slayers and just one satellite carrier right. running in for the slam. Not TR. <laughs> they go for the alley-oop nonstop. I mean, the pass feature is something which is so important in the game, and not a lot of people still use it. And then you see the key player matchup replays versus Vicento. Again, for replays, it's that cap percent. 42%, five caps per game, 0 0.73 KD there, but for Sento, kind of the opposite. 1.42 uplink KD from this year's Call of Duty World Championship. 26% cap ratio as well. And one thing which is really, really exciting for me is Pacento says he has an awesome strat. And I think you just saw kind of the difference between these two teams. Replays with kind of a, a low KD, but all kinds of caps. Watch for Sento just break. a percentage, a small percentage of yes, those scores. they're going to do it. And, and the smoke is out, the Amelie's out, Ben. Right. Why does this have so, you so, so excited? So this is the game plan which Vicento said he was going to do in the grand final, okay? He has the thermal Amelie. He's going to smoke out the satellite drone twice. He's going to allow his teammate, who's going to be running hardware, to run towards the drone, and they're going to pass the drone essentially across the map if they can get their teammates in a position. Look, there, there goes the flag. Aqua has just completely outplayed him. He can get this kill. But no. no falls. That strat, so T1. If it works, they get an easy two-point lead. No one expects anyone to do that. What a fantastic opening, man. And Pacento with the Amelia is not worthless after that initial play. He stays in the action. Nagafen with the toss, and it will That's bank off and go in. 1-0 start in our first 30 seconds coming in from TR. Replays, only man up. That was four down. Pacento moving the objective once again. Remy leading the charge, oh, and there you're going to see the slam. The passing feature coming out. It looks so snazzy as well when players do it, but TR all over the now right now a couple of players fall and finally to able to get some control back but in the first minute three points already scored for TR that breakout on this map is better than any other team in the game period uh, that is kind of crazy but my heart is pumping <laughs> adrenaline is coursing through my veins right now I can't even imagine what it feels like to be one of these players what a start coming out from TR but denial not giving up yet and that was a huge play even though attached got the kill that player from TR able to throw the ball out, reset it, clear the base. That's going to prevent Denial from getting on the scoreboard. And now JCAP and crew have to totally reset their game plan. Yeah, that was unfortunate because they could have been on for a one, maybe even a two-point play. Play with the battle, going to try and lock down glass. And that area of the map, Chris, is going to be so, so important throughout the game. You want to force the opposition spawning out over towards green. By doing that, they have to wrap back towards their base, and it's so, so difficult. <laughs> Oh, someone from now tried to throw the drone to Aqua just so he'd stop shooting at it, but ultimately both players down. Just over three minutes still to play in the first side of comeback up blink. Still, 3 OTR. You know, I, I thought that player was actually resetting the drone, and I thought Aqua was going to jump up and intercept it. Strong play, though, coming from Denial after that. After clearing the base, you got replays making his moves. Attached, leading the charge with the two-piece. They need two more kills, though. Player still inside, no. and replays going to get so close. Can J-Cap get the rebound? Kills coming through. Attached, though, last man standing is across the map. He's going to wait to see if someone from TR is going to run the screen, but nope. Smart play coming out of Facento, I believe that was, who just plays the drone. And Tatch was playing that sneaky. I like that play from him. Drops back towards bottom middle, picks up one kill. Denial actually have complete control of the drone area. How they opt to run it straight back towards glass side. Nagafen picks it up. Easy assist comes from him. Uh-oh, player still in glass though. That was a huge two-piece from Facento. One more player there. And look at your mini-map. We have two red arrows trying to surge forward. Nagafen gonna lose both of his blockers. The longest no. range shot possible. Oh, and it's intercepted by replays. Replays, phenomenal stuff from him. He may only be two and seven, but he's kept this at just a three-point game. Now, can he try and make a play with the drone? Has some support from two players. Expect to see JCAP pick up some kills. Clayster has as well. Attach is going to be there doing the slaying roll for him, and Replay's going to slide this one in for two. <laughs> oh, look at that little style point. The 180 is going to find a kill. After this, spawn kills trying to come through, but he's going to be stopped short. Meanwhile, Clayster getting up top, doesn't go for the AC toss. Instead, able to push it forward, oh. and that one is going to go through Clay on the board. 14 kills, 10 deaths. Now a score from the uplink as oh. well. And Replays is going to keep it rolling with that melee. That was nasty. Double jump melee attack. He's by himself over here. Oh, he's missed a oh, one point throw, so though. That's, that, that's unfortunate. But looking at that scoreboard attached, 16 and 10, with still over a minute of game time available. You know, Denal doing what they do best, slaying. Nagafen looks as if he is going to just throw that one in towards the enemy base. 
See if his teammates can try and flood it, potentially go for two. They have nine seconds to pick up the drone. They shouldn't have any issues if Nagat can just get there in time, but no, shut down. That was Jcat with a big kill. Remy trying to come in from the side. Satellite drone still alive, and Aft was going to pick it up and score for yeah, two. Yeah, and I really like what Remy did there. He knew there was going to be a player at the wall, turns around, is going to trust his teammate to go for that, and now he still maintains control, at least for the moment. Two players up, though, Jcap and Replays, are going to try and push Facento out of glass. The reason this team has been so successful, Facento is keeping up with Clay when he pulls out the bow. Absolutely correct. That's the key. And the, the fight Sacento's winning, controlling that satellite drone area, as you see, just like that, he picks up Clayster. Big, big gunfights that you expect to see all game long. Facento gonna find one more, not gonna be able to finish that. It's gonna be Aqua rotating around, and he is gonna find a second. That oh, is replays no. taken down. The slang from the SMGs has been the difference maker. Nagafen, not really too involved on the slang side, but he's definitely been involved in almost every single score. Eight points on the board, five belong to this revenge squad. So can Denial left. bring it back? Attack is gonna go for it! Is it gonna connect? No, not able to throw it in time. So going into the half, a 5-3 lead for Team Revenge. Three plays in your round, any kill cam picking up a two-piece and I think that's kind of going to be the difference maker. Can he keep slaying and keep right. pace ahead of Nagafen? Just a two-point difference between these two squads as we switch spawns. I expect Denial to tie things up first thing. I mean, Replay's had a pretty slow start, but he's picked things up massively and managed to get that two-point play as well. So props to him with that objective work. But realistically, Facento, if he can keep kill killing Clayster in gunfights like that and controlling the satellite drone respawn area, TR are going to take a, yet another uplink in this tournament. Aqua is always in the weirdest places on the map, man. He just finds nooks <laughs> that no one checks in the pro community. Oh. They always run eights against each other, just playing with pickup teams. And he is showing them something they have not seen yet in Advanced Warfare. Vicento continuing to put the pressure on with the bow. And he has Glass locked down once again. But the satellite, it's in the hands of Clayser. And Clay going for the toss is going to miss wide right replays going in for the rebound. Can he get this oh. kill? This would be huge, but no, Satellite Drone Carry just gets away. And that is going to be Nagafen. He's pushed greenside, had a teammate in support. He throws for one. Maybe could have pushed that for two, but wanted to play it safe. That now forces a two possession game in favor of TR. Absolutely, and Nagafen was one of two oh. players left oh, alive. No. Vicento oh. dodges the first melee, but is caught with the second. A three streak here for Attach as he's trying to charge into the TR base. Replays cleaning up both of those. Jcap moving the satellite, and he is going to have replays cover as he goes through. Nice work here from this denial squad. They're just one point away. The, these next few gunfights can be massive as well because TR is going to continuously spawn out at green. And I think Denial is still winning them. It looks like it. Oh, Attach just got the most important three-piece. This could actually be a two-point uh -oh. play for replays. Remy! No! But teammates in support, they're going to get it. And Denial go back into the lead. Yeah, I was trying to find if there was anyone else from Revenge still in position. There was not two players in the middle of the map. But it's all Denial with that positioning. When Clay was slaying, he held down the spawns, kept his oh. opponents out of the base, and there's another just short missed opportunity. He needs to get that out of his hand faster. And TR have actually thrown that drone over towards glass side. Someone's picked it up. That was for center. Teammates are in support. They could actually slide in for two here if Remy can juke out uh -oh. two players. May actually throw nice for one. Good so. Tie game just under three minutes to play 7-7. Seven, seven. We've seen some lead changes all tied up though with 247 left in this one. Satellite being carried in by Denial. Replay tosses it, but it banks off the wall. Jcap, last man standing on this side of the map. It's Remy and Aqua winning that fight. And now Remy with a one point toss opportunity. Does he sink it? He does. And TR are just so efficient when it comes to those one point throws. It's very rare you'll see them kind of mess that up in their decision making as well. Went to go for two, went to go for one. Now going to go for another one point play. Got Gets it. That's it. Two point lead now for TR. Just under two and a half minutes to go. You know, and I, and I had the key player highlighted this yep. whole time. It has been oh, Aqua he slayed causing down. chaos. Four down, Jcap, everyone falling, and now it's going to be the drone once again pushing through. Aqua clearing the way. What a spree from him as they are pulling away with just two minutes left. Two minutes left, 11 to 7, and Nagafen starting to heat up with his bow. Picks up one. Can he find the second? Of course he can. It's Nagafen. Facento has the drone. Three players were down momentarily. Looks for another kill. Not going to be able to get it. I think they've thrown that drone under the base. Did yep, they connect with scored, bro. Scored. Oh, I mean, there you go. Yeah, hard to keep up. That's with all this going down. Coyster, 
really needs to make a big play here. Get his team to just calm down for a minute, regain control. I love that J-Cap's going back to the bow here. They know they need to play for positioning. Not out of it yet. Anything could happen in the last 90 seconds. Oh, J-Cap with a big stop. Last bullet on Remy. Needs to try and control glass. Replays has the drone. We've seen crazy things happen. There's a minute and a half in the game. A five-point deficit for Denau. They just need to slay. A dash hitting them in the window. If they it, can do this spawn trap like we saw them do a little bit earlier run, they can easily come back into this game. Jcap doing a phenomenal job of holding down glass, but he needs more out of his teammates. Attached 33 and 26 is doing everything he can. It's Clay and Replace, the two players for me to watch here in the final minute. Can they get it going? Replace going with the drone, but there are two defenders in his way. Aqua tossing this one out, just forcing Denial to back into their base. Clay is going to get this ball. Will he be able to toss it up? He's got attached once again, leading the way with a nasty two piece. Play. He's gonna have to throw that one or just a one-point play. That now leaves just two-point differential. I'm sorry, a four-point differential. Two two-point plays would suffice. But Aqua, oh, if he picks up that kill, it's huge. But Jcap has the drone. He's Teammates need to slay out here. Oh, he did not get the help he needed. Cover from the right was blown, and you're gonna see Aqua and Pacento left alive, still defending. No one from TR focused on the objective at this point. They just want to keep Denial off it. They have to hold him off for 15 seconds. Remy trying to move it out, but Nagafen is there to cover. Phenomenal play. Revenge Prime to take game number three. And that continues that undefeated streak in uplink here at the 2015 Call of Duty World Championship. I am so impressed with this TR squad. They play this game mode perfectly. The teamwork, the chemistry, the huge plays from Aqua leading to that rally as everyone got their hands on the objective. That was simply an organized effort, and it really showed there in the second and half. You saw that from some of the strats they used, that breakout strat with the Ameli double smoke, teammates running hard wide. It's awesome to see, it really is. And you know, it's teams like that that are so well practiced and well oiled. Yeah, which is so difficult to beat, and that's exactly why they're unbeaten in uplink. I, I think one of the biggest things to do is to look at the statistics from that game. You see 41 kills coming in from Attach. When you look at the, the kills coming through from the TR squad, they're not too one-sided. It seemed like Denial was kind of keeping right? pace. Attach was really putting the pressure on them, but it was just they took advantage of those opportunities. I would love to hear what Rambo thought of that last game. Go ahead, man. You heard the man. You want me to talk right now? Go up? ahead. Yeah, go go kick it off. So, so basically, the biggest difference wasn't slaying wise is when the kills were accumulated. We saw Aqua get like two or three kills in the base. Push them back, spawn. too. Yeah, it's yeah. basically like both teams had their fair efforts, their fair share of controlling green. Whenever uh, Dana had that little point spree they had going, they were controlling green the entire time. They were controlling the spawns. We saw Aqua, uh, excuse me, uh, attach, get two or three kills in a row a few yep. times. Really getting getting control of the base. And that was the big difference here is how Dana was able to control the base for maybe like 20 to 30 seconds at a time. You had to get two scores. And then, like we saw all tournament long, TR just flipped the switch. They were like, hey, we're going to get six to seven points in a row right here because we're just going to, you're not going to leave your corner of your base. And that's basically what happened. And that was a big difference maker in this game. I mean, the shot percentage, too, was way higher as far as just actually hitting these shots. And they, they just started rallying there towards the end. I mean, it got out yeah. of hand quick. They put up two one-pointers there. And then after that, once they pushed, the team just couldn't do much after that. Exactly. And, and the big point here is they were controlling green that entire time they were getting those plays. And whenever they did lose control, they were still controlling green. And green is the main point of control on this map. If you control the ball spawn, then you control the map. And it gives you the most opportunities to get them back in your spawn. And obviously, if you have the more opportunities, TR ended up having one really strong like follow play yeah. and got all those points that made the difference of the lead. Revenge one way, one away from putting it into another series oh, here. I, I know. I, after that like hard point game, I thought it was you know things were going to be a little different. But Revenge, they're ready. You still got that CTF coming up. Bro. I know, the CTF. What if Denial wins CTF? Oh Is that my stat gosh. gonna be still up? Game yeah, five? Then, then that that stat with game Oof. five would be like Denial winning it. Well we'll see. We got Justine over on the floor. She's hanging out with Greg from Sledgehammer. All right, Greg, how are you feeling? These these matches are getting pretty intense. Oh man, these are amazing. How about that up link? That is just ridiculous. These two teams are so amazing. Like whoever wins it it doesn't even matter. They're they're just outstanding. I can't I can't just bask in their glory for a minute. It's great. I mean, we've had such an exciting matchup leading up to all of this. I mean, how do you feel? I mean, this is it. This is the last little bit that we're, we're going to be going into this finals. Oh, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. It's amazing. This game has been three years of my life, um, and the team at Sledgehammer couldn't be prouder. Uh, just to have these guys just hitting it hard with this awesome competition is great.
All right, well, how are you guys all feeling here in the audience? All right. Well, thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing the rest of this Call of Duty Championship. And do you have any last words for us? Thank you, guys. Thanks to the fans. Um, it's great to be here. All right, thank you guys so much, and we will see you all soon. And I'm going to head back up to the casters to get this next game started. Thank you, Justin. The games can't begin fast enough for me, Ben. Right. This action, I don't want it to stop. I'll stay here all day. <laughs> Let's do like Make 18 like a best, best of fives. I'm, I'm good with I'm that. I'm with it. I, I don't think the players would agree, but I'm down for it. We've seen a hard point. We've seen a search. Yes. See not play. It's kind of like watching haymakers in a boxing fight. The last one though is like a lot of jabs coming in uh -huh. from this TR squad, but I think we're gonna see an answer back coming into CTF. It was very close the first time these two teams met up on ascent. What is going to happen in your opinion now? as we take it to our next map, and as we go to BioLab. In all honesty, this is where Clayster to become so, so important. You see that KD for him, a 1.38, a 1.28 from Nagafen. 31% uh, of the kills for Clay. That's that's huge. He needs to continue that if Denali is going to force a game five here in this first best of five. And it, it's worth mentioning, at this point, if TR win one more map, they haven't won the World Championship yet. That will force it to another Best of five. Don't get it twisted, boys and girls. We're going into game number four. The map loading up right now. Biolab capture the flag. This map, the most chaotic when it comes to CTF, it's all about being clutch, keeping your base clear, or getting those returns when you have a teammate in position to score. Last time I saw TR on this, it was Nagafen holding the base down on the other side. I'm really looking to see who is Denial going to put to keep their flag at home because TR, when they pull their flag, at least yesterday, they were scoring more than 50% of their attempts. And what's really interesting about the way TR are going to play this uh, Biolab is they're not afraid to just go for counters. And, and that's that's so, so important. They, they're very, very good at getting themselves in a proper position to counter pull the flag and play for a stalemate. That's not an issue for them. They don't mind that. Here in game number three, your red team is going to be Denial. Your blue team, the Sentinel squad, will be this revenge team. And right away, a very slow start for both squads. Only attach and Nagafen with kills so far, and it's going to be attached on your screen. Peeking into Biolab, I'll throw on the COD vision. You can see the outlines of his opponents. That was a big win. Remy tried to go for the flag right away, but it's going to be Aqua who I think is going to be able to get this first one out. If Remy goes down, look for Aqua to be the second one making those pulls. And it looks like they are going to finally spring into life, go for a flag pull immediately. Stop though by Jcap with a big two piece. And you know, Jcap is a CTF player, one of the best. Remy just saw players in purple gonna wrap behind as you see all the spawns coming through, but there was one player behind him. So good opportunity here for Jcap and the rest of Denial. Replays gets the two piece attached in the feet. Can Jcap keep this flag out? He's gonna get the kill and it's attached, making his way through by a one player in position to stop him right away. It's Facento outside with the bow. He's distracted though by Clayster and attached. I love the movement. Is gonna rotate this back through the middle, wait for it to be clear before he pushes forward. Yeah, he needed to wait and did the smart thing. However, the problem he's gonna have now is both flags running directly towards each other. There's gonna be a big gunfight with both flags. Aqua's gonna pick it up. Can he get the flag returned? Yes, Cap is a play directly behind him. He didn't see both flags back at base. We're gonna see that time and time again. And again, that was Replace with his second two pieces on a four kill spree. Let's take a look at the man who has been the world championships three times. This is his highest placing yet though. And you know he's still gunning for that number one spot. A big defensive play as well. Just came in, I believe that was by Remy. Nice to stop that flag carry making any moves whatsoever. Replace though, should be pulling that flag. Just gonna play ring around the rose. He picks up one. He knows there's gonna be a second player over towards green. Tries to get away. Has the support from his teammates. And more importantly, there is one player from Denial watching that base flag. Yep. And that's Jcap. He picks up the kill. Replays looking set to give Denial one And he's gonna get it home. You gotta thank Jcap for that. You gotta thank Glazer. They got the cutoff kills, allowing him to spring out free through that purple. And we're gonna get Clay on top of the purple, looking for the pressure. Nice job though by Jcap as well to continue to put back in their base. TR right. is held at home. Aqua on your screen, picks up one. Going to fall though. Clay's the last man up momentarily fought enough. But Clay peaks and has no problem now getting for center. Remy trying to stay alive. Nagafen rotating back to his home flag. He knows Denial's coming from all different directions. Won't be able to pick up that one. Instead, it is Cap busting through. He's gonna have support from Attach, and here comes the flag carrier. 
going out to snow side. Stuns though, keeping him in the base. Nice use of the equipment here as Remy is gonna have one left. Not gonna happen though. Look at the pressure constantly on them coming in from Attach. Attach misses that yellow gem, but it shouldn't be any issue. Has the enemy flag in his hand. Teammate's gonna slay, but unfortunately replays drops. And that was really the player Attach was relying on quite heavily. So he's actually had to run TR's flag back to TR's base. Nagafin is chasing. Very similar situation to what happened pretty much uh, two minutes ago. And it was Aqua who really caused the problems. He cleared the way for Nagafen to get this grab. And Nagafen at the start. Oh, Clay with a clutch return. We're going to see flags back at home. Nagafen no. at the start last time. Cap. Got it's it back. And there we go. 2 open. <laughs> you confused me for a second. I was like, I thought that went through. It is. Three <laughs> plays. 12 and 8. And we're going to see J Cap rotate back. It's going to be oh, Aqua with no. his flag, though. We could see a flag battle. Jcap has to run. He's got players chasing, though. And Denial, so good at CTF Biolab. One of the best maps as Remy managed to get that return. But again, both flags back at base. Nagafen's going to go for a pull, as well as that attach is going to go for a pull. In fact, Nagafen hasn't pulled the flag. He's just ready and waiting. Replays just boosted past a player, and he is going to get back to his base, but it's is it too late? Yo. Attached, hit oh. by one. There's one player left. The replays has to beat him to the flag. He's picking it up. He gets the kill and the score. 39 seconds left here in round number one. A huge 3-0 lead for Denial so far. Oh, Denial all over TR. What was that stat as well, familiar in the day? It was about 52% of the pulls from Revenge turned into points. Okay. Not the case so far. Look case, at well. the returns coming in. From Denial, you're going to see two from replays, one from Clayster, one from JCap. Zero captures coming through from Revenge in our first five minutes. Denial will have to flag again. This time it's going to be JCap. Uh, JCap with nine seconds left. Is he going to be able to go for the cap? Percenta needs to try and counter but there. he hasn't let him. And uh, JCap will have the flag in the last five seconds. 4 0 lead in favor of Denial. They want to end this in this game five. They're feeling pumped. Yeah, they had no they idea how close J Cap was. Vicento turning his attention to a player closer to him, and J Cap is just going to slip in. Fantastic run over on the green side, the barrel side of the map. Good stuff coming out from Denial, but TR, can't they bounce back? Bucket, what do you think? I don't know. Let's ask Los Angeles. Guys, do you think TR can take this game? It's about 46 Ooh. people who agree. Let's go over to Denial. They are looking to tie up this best of five. Well, kick things off with Remy. He pushes through purple. Double jumping play directly to his left-hand side. Unfortunately, he is going to fall. And honestly, this second side, I expect to see essentially Denial just flex. Flex the muscles, replays. The objective player for this team is 18 and 9. When he is getting that many kills, it is almost impossible for Denial to lose. Denial's playing pretty defensively right now. I don't know if it's just because they struggled on their opening push or if that's the game plan for the next five minutes, but I think that's the opposite mindset of what I'd like to see from them. I think they just need to keep the pressure on. It, we saw it working out so well there at the end of the first half. And early here, it's going to be revenge with map control, and they're already sending in a flanker. Remy gonna be taken down before Nagafen can get in position. Already a minute off the clock now with just four minutes remaining. Chia needs to cap at least a flag per minute if they're gonna be able to tie this and force an overtime, which would be pretty insane, to say the least. Nagafen has pulled a teammate in support. They should be able to pick up that kill towards mid by but one player chasing Nagafen could actually get shot in the back. It's gonna be closer in his bow. Oh. McLean not able to pick up the kill. Is he gonna get it? The That's movement from no, Nagafen, so difficult to land those shots, and he has it clear. The slam comes in, took a minute 30, but they're on the board, Ben, trailing by just three now. Okay, this is a little bit better from TR now. They just need to pick up those kills in towards mid-bio, and that's exactly what they've done. Only one player in the form of attach alive. He's going to have to wrap back towards Eskies. If Remy wins this gunfight, this is going to be massive for him. He does oh, as well. My goodness. Just destroys attach. If he can get it towards mid-bio here, we could see the second cap, but he tries to go snow again. Is he going to get away? Oh, oh my, my Remy. Lord. Movement on point. This was a 4-0 at the half. Two minutes in, TR are coming back into this game, Puckett. It took a minute 30 to get the first cap. It took 24 more to get the second. What a ridiculous Facento run here again. so far. You're going to see Facento running, but this time I think he's going to run into no! trouble. Oh, the Biolab skill say. comes through. Denial holds strong, at least for now. If Attach doesn't win that gunfight, Denial 
not looking good <laughs> going into the last two and a half minutes of this game. Still 4-2 in favor of now. Finally, Jacob able to put his hands on TR's flag. Looks as if he's going to head over towards Snow. There's going to be so many plays he's going to need to have to try and beat. Has replays in support, though. Flag's been countable by Remy. And Jacob now stuck between a rock and a hard place. Doesn't really know where to go. Player's going to challenge him. He falls. And that flag back on base for both two teams. Yeah, credit to Attach there to get his flag back in the base. Picked up two, and that's actually going to open up a lane now for a replays. The flag carrier for Denial. Will this be their fifth flag? Trying to stay up, but no, it's Remy again. And really, Remy has to be the MVP of this game. Taking over for revenge. He's oh. only 18 and 20, but he's been involved in almost every flag run, whether he's getting the intro kill or just getting that initial pull. Oh, Remy just a two piece mid bio. Jacob has pulled the flag, he's gonna drop. And going into the final two minutes, still a two flag lead for Denial. Denial started off so strong in the first half, pretty quiet here in the second, but they are holding strong. They can give a little, they just can't let this game get out of hand. We're gonna see Nagafin go for the pull as looking to see if the kill was gonna go down back at the TR base, and it will. It looks like it's That's going cap. to be replays with the clutch kill that springs attached, and attached is gonna throw it down. That is five to two. This game really just a minute 20 with 20 away from being done. From how's game five sound? Uh, I love game five. You love game five? You know what round I like? You like round 11, huh? I like all the rounds. Let's go to replays <laughs> here as he is gonna just double back. In fact, he's not going to find anyone. Jcap is doing too good of a job killing TR in their base. Yeah, that's pretty much Seven story. streak, is that okay? Hey, it's pretty good. You know, pretty good, especially against this level of competition. Very difficult to, to really heat up like that. Eight, Eight streak. streak with the flag as well, so the enemy know exactly where he is. He's probably going to challenge mid bio because, you know, I'm Jcap. Why not? Throws out the first stun. No, I should like to juke him out. Denial is going to force a game number five. 40 seconds left. Nearly impossible. As long as Jacob stays alive with this flag, this is GG. Absolutely. So the question here, who's There's gonna no one finish from with the most kills on this denial squad? You got replays and Jacob at 25 and 26, cap on an eight spree, and he's just hanging out. Great cover fire from his teammates. I mean, oh, look, look at that. Movement. You see it on the mini map. Fast no game. one is getting close. Both flags out, and this one is done. Denial has it locked up. Biolab goes in their favor. We're tied two apiece here on the main stage. And that means Denial are one map away from walking away as the Call of Duty World Champions and those awesome, awesome World Championship rings. I'm so excited right now. Backs against the wall for TR. They need to win this next map. It's such a destroy, which, you know, is going to be pretty intense. They 6 0 Denial in the first set of the series, but now in a game five. I don't know who I fancy, I really don't. The experience of Denial just coming out and, and really uh, showing us exactly what they're made of in that CTF. I fancy them both, Ben, honestly. I would be so happy to see Denial just lock it up with a game five. But I, but I would also best love to see a second whole series. We'll see what is to come in that game five, but for now, let's send it down to the floor. Fwiz, take it away. So, Revenge, two out of the 10 flags that they pulled, they were able to cap two, five out of the nine for Denial there. So just some COD stats coming in. So 20% for them, Denial out of 50 sec 56 percentage, pull the cap percentage. Great stats, please. Hey, man, I figure I got to provide stats because you're going to talk the whole time and give us the, the intel. So this was a, re I mean, Revenge, this, th this could have been a big game for them to push this into a second series. Not the outcome you want, especially when we talk about the, the, the significance of a capture the flag as we've seen here at Champs all day long. And now going into a game in five search, this, there was a lot on the line here. Yeah, definitely. And the first side of this map was basically den all Denial. Denial was up 4-0. Yeah. It's kind of hard to kind of go anything about besides replays making those very important kills with the flag. We saw the flag runs, we saw two flags from him and a 16 to nine performance on the first side. So there's one thing I want to touch though is Puckett said that he didn't really enjoy, he didn't really like how Denao was playing uh, that first, the first start of the second half, basically playing really defensive. And I'll somewhat agree with that. There's very two different ways they could have played it. Either aggressive, trying to get stalemates going, or trying to get more to base control, playing it slowly. Yeah. So they, they went for the more defensive route. It didn't work out. Right. They, were, they went four to two. Instead of keep doing it, they just switch it up. They were like, hey, look, defense is not working out. Let's play aggressive. Let's keep how, playing how we were playing the first side. Worked out exactly how they wanted to. They had ended up out by 20, getting out of flat, and even getting an extra cap out of that. So we've got game number five up here, search and destroy. Last time Revenge played, it was just brutal. They got they 6-0 denial. Do you, I, I can't imagine a 6-0 happens for either one of these teams in this no. game number five. But what are you expecting? I mean, I honestly do believe in my heart that denial closes this one out like six to three, and they win they win it all. 
Uh, but what do you think? I mean, if you want to look at that first game, to be, it really was it's drift, right? So there's a lot of conversation going on. Not a lot of teams had, or teams didn't have the longest time. It's a three month in map compared to the other maps, or like five or six months in. So the meta has a lot more time to kind of accentuate on on the other maps besides drift. So the six on drift to me, if I was denial, doesn't really tell much. Yeah, it tells more that TR just drift play is like amazing. Yep, and they were getting picked every round. If anything, I can point. take from denial on that is the fact that don't give. TR those clutch picks at the start of the round. Don't give him yeah, first it blood. Yeah, it was the first blood. Yeah, the you first six straight first bloods. You yep. can't let that happen against so team like TR. They take, they play slowly. So if you give him a first blood, they take full advantage of it, make the trades happen to win every round. And if you give him that, they're not going to make mistakes again. We're going to see a second series. All right, let's go back into game number five. I'm going to throw it back up to the booth with Puckett and Benson. It all comes down to this. Denial could put it away right here, Ben. Yep. Will they be able to close it out? TR, they've done such a great job throughout this entire tournament, though, when it goes to game five, round 11, they're the only team to stay perfect, at least coming into today. You know, TR have got to feel good. They really do. You know, they just 6 0 to now in the past, such and destroying the series. That's going to give them a little bit of confidence. Like you heard Ray say, though, was drift. So, not that many teams as well practiced as they would have liked to have been, but going into this game five, it's going to be riot. And sniping is going to be so, so important. Last time we saw this map, I believe, from Revenge, it was against Phase Red. That came at the very start of the upper bracket okay. uh, in just round number one. And we saw a round 11. It was Aqua picking up two kills, going up against Aches and Crew to Don't lock it, it in. Don't jinx it. Why would you jinx it? Because I love to jinx it. <laughs> Why wouldn't I jinx it if I can jinx it, Ben? 6.11 more kills in SND then their opponents is denial. That was, uh, of course, most likely before the last whitewash we saw on Drift. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that definitely changed things up a little bit, I'll be honest. But game five, as you heard Puckett say, denial win here, they will be your Call of Duty World Champions. TR win here, forces a second best of five. Personally, I want to see that second best of five. It all comes down to this. We're going to be kicking things off with Kleister as he's grabbing the bomb. And we are going to see the push right away. Actually, Clay going to give that one to replace. He's going to pull out the Moors and open things up. Looking for that snipe. Looking at Clay. Missing a couple of shots, but should be OK. Replay still with that bomb. Looks as if they are going to push B. And I love the strat from a team straight away to push B on the first attacking round. This is such an A-sided map. You see so many teams push that A-site, but now TR have to always send at least one, maybe two plays for that B-site on defense. And we just showed you Bomb was planted by replays. Attached doing the work, though. There is two already. It's all up to Aqua. 35 oh, just seconds, and he's done, man. One on four. <laughs> I, I don't see any way he pulls this out. Is he just going to play for kills? I mean, yeah. At, at this point, 1v4, 24 seconds left. Unless everyone from Denial basically lines up in a perfect line <laughs> and he kills them all within five seconds, it's not going to happen. Uh, obviously, Riot, you see the team on the attacking side win more rounds than the defensive side, defensively sided map. So, and props no to Attach, who set the tone that round. Oh, he went After hard. After Clay huh? missed a few snipes, Attach just sprinted forward at his opponent, picked up one, got a second one a few moments later after the bomb was planted and replaced, really putting the pressure on this TR squad by getting the bomb down. Aqua with the IMR to open things up. And he's gonna be rocking this trophy. So look for him to just charge right in, expect grenades, and try and win the gunfight. Won't be able to take it. It's a snipe missing him, but he's gonna be cleaned up by JCap. Nagafen answers back, three on three. I love the aggressive push from Denial. They pushed out of that A site. Something you don't see that many teams do as Nagafen actually picks up, I believe that was replaced for Sento getting that assist. Now. Three versus two in favor of TR. Uh -oh. Attach needs to win that gunfight. One shot backs off. Cloyster, though, cleans up Remy. And the bomb is being planted. All this being covered by Facento. And now, bomb down at A. We've seen this situation so many times. Who is the more clutch duo? Is it Facento and Nagafen, or will it be Cloyster and Attach? Facento in that bottom middle area. It needs to be careful because Denal could actually hop on that bomb and go for that defuse. Bit of a ballsy play there, 23 seconds left. Time is ticking. Uh -oh. Denial flood. Nagafen picks up one. That was Kleister. And unfortunately, Attach is going to be in a position to trade that 1v1. 15 seconds left. Bomb down. He's got to get on it. He knows it, and so does his opponent. It's going to be Facento coming from behind and locking up that round. So it's 1-1. Both teams winning their attacking rounds yeah, so far. Uh, that's what you expect to see on a map like Riot. As I said earlier on, you know, it's offensively sided. 
So it's when you really, really win those defenses, which it becomes just such a big, big part of the game. Round three coming our way right now. We're going to switch it up one more time. Denial is going to be taking it. And where will they go with the bomb? Replays 100% of the time carries the bomb, I feel like, when we watch the squad. <laughs> I mean, you know, we pull in the objective guy for a reason. He's going to be the one who, you know, expect to see him run trophy, exo trophy, in S&D. Nice be a stuns coming through. Attach is going to be slowed down, and that's really what they're looking for, to send an attach in right away. Trade. Trading kills, it's Remy and Clayster. And we're gonna see attack. Pick up this one. Oh, no! Gets the business. Facento just coming out huge. The headshot on replays and then cleans up attached. What a job and by important. TR on defense. That's so important because exactly that pocket. TR winning a defensive side. Now you need to see Denal immediately reply. You don't want to allow TR to get any momentum, especially in search and destroy. How about that three streak there, uh, Facento? It's pretty nice, Heating huh? Heating up, man. And, and you know, you and Matt were telling me about Facento and how good he's looked he's so in good. search and destroy coming into this tournament online. I'm seeing it on land here. The man is the same person, and he just does not miss shots. That two-piece really took over that previous round. But Clayster looking to answer back this time. Remy's going right in for it, trying to get to him in time. And he is going to be chasing Clayster, who punishes. Nice patience there to back up and line up that snipe. And the reason behind that was Facento hit the stun. So immediately Remy knew he could be aggressive. But Clay, too smart, backs out, picks up the snipe. Now, three versus three. Bomb down. Denial needs to pick up the defuse. Replays is way behind his opponents here. Big kill just went down. That was attached, taken out. Naga fan down goes Aqua. So it's all up to Facento. One on three. Bomb planted. Can he defend? It's not oh. gonna work. It looks like we're gonna see Clay cleaning it up, and he's gonna allow another his good response. To get that defuse attached, defusing that bomb. And again, you know, Tion won the defensive round, and it's been immediately replied by Denal. So it's gonna be tied up at two-two. Huge, huge part of this game. It is absolutely silent in this crowd right now. Everyone on the edge of their seats. We don't know what is going to happen so far. Each team trading blows. Will one be able to pull away? We go back over to the denial squad. Attach on your screen, rocking the overclock. He's got double frags out as he puts away the stuns. He's looking to get aggressive and do damage right off the break. Vicento charging it, dodges the shots though. And now it's going to be attached with the SMG, needs to get the job done, and he is going to get lit up. Vicento catches him with the Moors. Nice snipe from Vicento, because Attach was actually falling down at that time. As now replays with that bomb, looks as if he is planting it over towards that A side. TR have stacked B, and then you see replays. We'll get that bomb down. Now, TR, we need to bounce back. It looks like that's Remy watching the back end, and you're going to have teammates rotating around. Aqua going to be in the middle prison, and the question is, when are they going to flood forward? Jcap's going hunting here. I mean, 29 seconds. Time is uh -oh. sort of running out for TR. Is Jcap going to be so sneaky? Dashes. Should be able to pick up one. Does so. That was Vicento. Now, 1v3. A nice job outside, but it's going to be Aqua all left alone. And he did no get way. replays here to make it a little bit easier. Nope. Not going to get it, though. 3 2 denial. With the advantage for now, as we see Jcap in your round and a kill cam. Good stuff from Jcap. Obviously, really nothing I could do. One and five from him. A one and four from Remy as well. So. Yeah, they've been non-factors, and that's really surprising for me. Those are your first blood guys that kind of really helped out at the early rounds of Drift. I'm going to start things off with Aqua and see what's going wrong. And, you know, this could be the, the pressure we talked about. You know, Denial veterans of Call of Duty Esports. This is the first time TR have ever been in a position like this in their whole careers. And, you know, it could potentially start showing. De Denial's so ready for grenades there. You saw a 15-second yep. delay before they push forward, but now... They're going to flip through as well. Action is going down over at A. Nagafen, after not seeing anything, sees two bodies. Lights up replays. Shots going down. Clayster about to peek. He gets the kill. And Clay is going to continue to surge forward. Morse goes down up top. But that shot did not get the kill. And the problem with that strap there from TR is Nagafen had the bomb. Oops. So he's died on A Street. So even though TR have complete control of B site, they can't get that bomb down. They're going to need to fight Denial. Replays was so clutch in their previous SMB. Oh, I don't think Denial realized five, that. 
And he is gonna be working right there with Placer and Attach. Three players versus three players oh, all in the back. Wow. And the double assist for Replace as it all comes down to Remy. Oh, Remy. That's one. Can he find the second? Remy, not oh. going to be able to do so. Misses the shot. And Denal now, now with a two-round lead. They are two rounds away from being a Call of Duty world champions. I'm standing up right now, Ben. <laughs> this, is, this is intense. I'm not going to lie. I'm so excited right here. Is Denal going to be able to close this one out? 4-2 lead. TR need to reply. They all need to step up to even get close to forcing this into a second best of five. On board with JCap for the start, they're now back on the attacking side, and this round is, is so important for TR. They need to win this. And shots going down. Remy pulling out the snipe inside, actually spotted JCap, but wasn't able to hit it. Now it's gonna be attached, flooding through, hits oh. the melee. Attaches seven and three, man. Like, he's just so on form. Clay as well, seven and three. The two players we've been preaching about all weekend, stepping up to another level right now for Denal. It's so tough to say who is playing better this week and everyone from denial going off when they need it. But right now, it's going to come down to Facento and Aqua for all the revenge fans. Facento, can he get this kill? The bomb is oh, rotating over to A. And as he gets beaten by Jcap, it all comes down to Aqua here in round seven. Oh, and he had so much time. He didn't even need to take that shot, but he's going to fall. Aqua not going to be able to pick up the first kill. Still a one versus three. 40 seconds remaining for him to try and clutch up. And Jcap has been playing so confident. Here is the battle up top. You're going to see pressure coming in from a teammate. Replays takes out Cap, but they get the kill anyway. One more round, says Clayster. And then he's finally able to add the one missing accolade that he wants to possess. So many years put in leading up to this moment. So many hours and look put at the in to look. advance warfare. TR look nervous. And here we go. Let's go. Wolfpack chant is starting denial. Can they close it out? Aqua is going to lead the charge for TR. You got Remy pushing up aggressively with the SMG. And there is Clayster spotted and tagged, but surviving. Bomb being planted by Nagafen. One player from this denial squad peeking on the flank. And I think, no, they actually stop planning and attach. He's going to get first blood. Can he stay alive? Yes, he can. Four versus three in favor of Denal. Remy able to pick up one and attach. He's going to go down. Remy with two. Now, three versus two in favor of Team Revenge. J-Cap. J-Cap oh. putting shots in Remy. Remy surviving, though. This round, so it oh, replay, replay stops the plant. 39 seconds left, replay, I'll give it two, not gonna happen. All now comes J -Cap. down to Cap here in this round. One on two, Facento and Remy left alive. And Cap has time to work with, remember. So much It's time. going to be Facento who needs to get the bomb planted, and there it goes. So now Facento and Remy going up against J-Cap, one of the most experienced Call of Duty players in the pro circuit. One versus two, a clutch here would give his whole team that world championship ring. J-Cap looking, player behind him, one in front, he's tagged up. No way, no way, no way! No way. In. One on one, 18 seconds. Remy just Ooh. needs to stay alive. And Remy's Remy gonna check it. He gets it. Oh, we went dead silent there, not giving away anything with that ninja defuse, but Remy checked it. Ballsy smart play from J-Cap, it really was. Remember when Remy was one and five, he is seven and six on a four streak, he has brought it back. Imagine if, imagine if it ended on a ninja defuse, I can't, I can't. Don't do that, don't, no, just now. You won't have to, my friend, it's good, <laughs> replays. Going to grab this, will they go to B for the first time? It's been A every single round from both teams after that first one, and we're gonna see replays open up double nades. Do they check? Aqua in the middle, in a gunfight, gonna get first blood, that is huge. Three on four now, Aqua spots the players, he calls out the action to his teammates who rotate over to B. That first blood, big. Denial, of course, on the attacking side. Replays with the bomb, three versus four. Denial with 5-2 in the lead, just one round away. If TR mount this comeback, this is going to be one of the biggest and best comebacks in such and Destroy AW history. Attach is waiting no! and he's going to get punished. 
Nagafern with a massive, massive kill right there on attaching. Place the pre firing, has a player trapped. 40 seconds left. And you know, he needs a little bit of support from his team here, but. Nagafern no! again! Nagafern. He's been trapped twice and walks away with two kills. Replays, one versus four. 40 seconds left. Picks up one. Now. Can he find anybody else? Bob's planning. He needs to reload. Nope. 21 bullets left, and that is not going to happen. Aqua TR gets the defuse. TR coming alive. Aqua has been a non-factor, though, at 2 and 8. That was a big kill for him. He's going to get the defuse, and hopefully we will see a little bit more momentum going in favor of TR for all the revenge fans out there. But the Wolfpack fans, they are cheering on Denial to close it out. They do not want to see another round 11. Finish it right I here in round do. 10. I want to see a good start round 11. TR with 5-2 down, now 5-4. They're on the attacking side. The kind of preferred side for a search and destroy riot. Can they close it out? Or sorry, can they force a, a round 11? Or will Denial close it out here? Attached, looking for jump shots. You see Clayster down beneath them protecting. Oh, and Attach is getting uh -oh. very, very ambitious. Going for the peak with the sniper rifles. Can I see for center, but misses. And Attach still hanging back, but here comes TR. Shots going down. Attach is trying to pull someone out of position. And all eight plays basically on this one side of the map. Attach still trying to find some intel with the sniper rifle, but so far. No kills go down, but the bomb does, and that's Nagafen. He's done well. Can he get away with his life? Yes, he can. Four versus four, 40 seconds for Denial to defuse this bomb. Uh-oh. I don't want to say anything. <laughs> and there come the kill. J-Cap, then Facento attach as well. So two on three in favor of Denial. However, of course, Denial do need to defuse that bomb. 20 seconds left. Replays. Replays. It's on one. another. It all comes down to Facento here. The bomb getting defused. Oh, Attach is on it. He's on it. Facento, he's going to fall. And Attach is going to get the defuse. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, your winners for the 2015 Call of Duty Championship. What a job by Denial. They hold strong, men. They lock it down on Riot. The prison is theirs. The title is theirs. $400,000 richer after that intense game five. And the rings as well, Puckett. The one thing, the one thing Clayster didn't have. He has X Games gold. He has MLG championships. UMG, he has it all. Now, a Call of Duty World Championship. And what an event for everyone on this Denial squad. I cannot believe what we just saw from Denial in this tournament. They went through Optic Gaming. They went through everyone. They took out TR. And ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the winners of the 2015 Call of Duty Championship presented by Xbox Denial Esports. What a performance here this week in Benson. They have played so, so well. The confetti cannons fly as such a deserving team bucket. Ridiculous stuff from the world's top team at Call of Duty for Advanced Warfare. Clayster, JCap, Replace, and Attach have accomplished their goal. Yep. <laughs> you can see how much it means to them. All these four guys, $100,000 richer. And that prestigious Call of Duty World Championship ring, of course. And there's still that MVP. Still that MVP to be cited. And you have to give credit to Revenge, the Cinderella story oh, finally yeah. coming to an end. But they took Denial the distance, two game fives. Denial, though, coming out on top. I mean, you know, TR, a fantastic squad. Really, really proven to so many people out there. They can play at the highest level, but it's this squad. They play second at the US Championship. They play second at the last major MLG event in North America. And now, finally, Finally getting that monkey off their back in first place. J-Cap was in the grand finals just two years ago. He fell short in the final game that year, but this year he has done it. Let's send it down to the floor. We have Wiz with our champion. I can't. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. What's up, boys? Congrats. Congratulations. How you guys feeling? I feel pretty good. Amazing. 
Cap, how you feel about it? I don't think there's words to describe right now. Reap? Okay, then you don't have any. I feel amazing. Everybody feels pretty damn well, man. All right. Whew. He's a little intense, isn't it? You guys just didn't want to have to play another match, did you? I would not want to play another match. I can't believe I actually won a championship. Weird. Look at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're already going to put a ring at 18, huh? You know. How's mom feeling over there? She, she, you know. A man of few words. Is she so happy over there? Where's mom? Look, there she is. All right, guys. What, final words, man. Final words. You know, to all the haters that doubted us, we came out here and showed why we're the best team in the world. So proud of my teammates, the organization, all the fans in the crowd. You guys are the best. Thank you, guys. Oh, look at that. Hey, look at that. All right, I'm going to send it back up to the commentators with Puckett and Benson up top. All right, thank you for his denial. They don't need to say anything. Their gameplay said it all this World weekend, Benson. Champions, World baby. champions. Feels good. Huh? So much money on the line, so much pressure. And denial is able to power through it all. I am so impressed by what they have accomplished this weekend. I'm, I'm proud of them as well. They're all really good guys. You know, some of the, the smartest, most genuine people in, in the professional Call of Duty esports circuit. So. They deserve everything they get. All right, well, I think that is about it for us, but there's just one more thing to do. There is one That's more true. piece of hardware to give out before we get back to the celebration on the floor. That's right, for the first time this year, we're awarding one of our top players from the 2015 Call of Duty Endowment Tournament, MVP. Absolutely, and this award was chosen by an expert panel as well as you, the fans, throughout the weekend. I'm excited for this because I think this player 110% deserves it. Congratulations, Clayster, the MVP of the 2015 Call of Duty World Championship. There is no more deserving man than that guy right there as Fwiz brings him the hardware. James Clayster Eubanks, the 2015 Call of Duty Endowment MVP. He played like a champion from the very first match Never uh, a poor performance from him this weekend. Unbelievable performance for Clay. You see him lifting that MVP trophy. Just sweetens that world championship just a little bit more. Incredible stuff. Everyone from Denial playing well to earn this championship. Let's send it down to the floor one more time with Fwiz. How do you feel, man? Are you feeling so good right now? Yeah, man, I'm feeling great. You know, the MVP is a great award, but that doesn't take anything away from what we accomplish as a team. We all came out here with a goal in mind. Ever since we started teaming, we just had like one step after another. And you know, these guys and I, we put together a really great run here. We didn't lose after a pool play and I'm just so proud of my teammates. That's about it. All right, I think we got a check for these guys, don't we? Does somebody, somebody bring up this check. Give these boys $400,000, please. Pass it, you get over here, you pass it to him. It's your game, man, it's your game. I didn't make it. <laughs> All right, guys, we got, came down 32 teams. You guys had a hell of a weekend. Tough bracket going into Saturday. You were able to do it, $400,000. You got MVP, Clayster, life's pretty good right now. Hey, go you, got some, you got something you wanna to say to everybody? Oh yeah, sure, I mean, honestly, this was amazing. I think it goes without saying, we should give a big round of applause for Team Revenge for an incredible performance. That was very nice of you. They did, they play, had a hell of a match. Yeah. And, you know, what an incredible run for the Wolfpack, right? Undefeated all the way through, all weekend to this moment. Congratulations, you guys. On behalf of Sledgehammer Games, Activision, Microsoft, well done, well deserved, incredible performance. Congratulations. All right. And now for the big payoff, we, you know, to give us a hand and welcome everybody, we had Michael come out, we got the MVP out, we got the check out, we got the trophy, but I feel like we gotta bring, at some point, we gotta get some, some rings out for you guys too. I know, yes, yeah, that's what you guys are like, you're like, you, you don't even care about all that. So we'll bring that out in a second for everybody. But Conry, any last words you got for the squad? I know, I, I wanna make sure I wrap it up for you. No, I, that's great. And you know, congratulations Team Denial. I think the check is amazing, of course, but more importantly, your 2015 COD champions, Team Denial. Woo! I'm gonna, I'm gonna go fight somebody until they bring the rings out for you guys.
We're gonna wait for those. We'll bring those out in a second. And then, Attach, you have any last words you wanna say? Uh, I just love my team, and that's it. <laughs> that's it. This is like, he's, he's, got, he's got no words right ready. All right, so while we're going to get those rings ready, I wanna set it up one more time to Puckett and Benson, who are gonna wrap this thing up for us. All right, thank you, Fwiz. What an exciting week it has been, Ben. Oh, it's been awesome. It's we started with 32 of the world's best. After months of online qualifiers, the top teams converged here in LA. It was just denial and revenge, though, in the grand finals. And what a show they put on. It started in the upper bracket finals. They yep. finished here in the grand finals. Congratulations to everyone who tuned in. You just witnessed some Call of Duty history. It was honestly one of the best Call of Duty championships we've ever seen. It really was. All the right. whole event. Absolutely. Uh, ben, before we wrap it up here, what was the best moment of this weekend in, in your eyes? <sighs> the best moment this weekend? There's been so many. There, there really has. That, that's almost an impossible question. And that's really a testament to how good Call of Duty Advanced Warfare is on the competitive circuit. So many top five plays. We may as well just make a top 50 plays. There's been that many. Oh, well, we're going to be busy when uh, we get uh, back yeah, to the MLT I, studio. We are going to be busy. I'm going to need a day busy. off. I'm just going to say it right now. I'm going to need a couple of days off probably to recover all this excitement, man. It's been unbelievable. Guys, it's been a great time, but we're not done here yet. We want you to stay tuned after the finals to see an exclusive sneak peek at Ascendance here. The new DLC pack that is dropping Tuesday on Xbox. Thank you all for hanging out with us throughout the weekend. We'll see you next year.